On November 13, 2008, Wrath of the Lich King was launched, and with it came the first achievements. But 14 years later, how have those achievements held up? In this mini-series of the Achievement Man Saga, I'm going to run through most of the Wrath of the Lich King achievements to take a look at how they have held up today versus newer achievements. We'll start by focusing on the questing achievements, but as a little side note, when the questing achievements first launched, they required players to do like 100-ish quests per zone, but since then they have been updated, so they are now storyline based, like some of the later Lore Master achievements. So let's kick it off with Howling Fajord. Howling Fajord requires 12 storylines to complete, and it all starts out at Valgard Port. This port was designed by some galactic brains who decided to build it right next to Utgard Keep, a fortress full of huge, mean Vrykul men. And unsurprisingly, the port is being attacked by the Vrykul. This dwarf here has a plan to Watch relieve the back. assault a little bit, but I have to get my hands dirty first. So I run into the town outside of Utgard Keep and I start beating up some Vrykul. And in the process, I sneak into one of their houses and I grab some harpoon gun instructions. Stop! You violated the law. This dwarf guy, who I have now named Tony, to is you. working on deciphering them, but they are written in crayons, so it'll take a bit to decipher. While I'm waiting around, this little Drunk shaman man here crystal. offers me some of his shaman drugs to pass the time. So I wander off while I'm high on this illicit shamanistic substance, and I have visions of 15,000-year-old Vrykul with a baby. The baby looks human, and they complain it can't walk. Then I wander around a bit more, having another vision, King Ymiron saying all of the babies must die and that they are a curse. I come back and I tell the shaman man what I saw and he says those were actual visions of the past and I just unlock some of the mystery of humanity's origins. And that is one storyline completed. Once I finish up that, Tony says he's got it all figured out. He needs me to head over into the very cool town and steal a controller for the harpoon guns. I head in, I grab it, and Tony How works on it, does a couple tweaks, and he sends me across the valley. Over here, there's big harpoon guns looking down on the town. I hop in, I grab one, and I rain down hell upon Vrykul Town. Napalm City, baby. Once I finish up that slaughter, I surf on a harpoon back home. Tony tells me I've got to help up at Westgard Keep now. Keep They're being the harassed ground. by the Vrykul as well, but they've also got red dragons with them. So I'm off, and I head inside the keep to talk to Mr. Westgard himself. Hi. And this grants me another storyline completion. Mr. Westgard asks me to clear out the Proto Drakes and Vrykul attacking them. I oblige, but while I'm out, I want to go check out how the Forsaken are handling their Vrykul issues, because they also set up a little town here. So I'm curious, what are they doing? And they're using plague bombs to kill the Vrykul. Bruh. Oh no, if they're using plague bombs on the Vrykul, then they can use plague bombs on us. I take out a few of the plague tanks while I'm there spying, and I grab a sample of that plague so we can take a look at what the heck's going on with it. Upon heading back, I give some of the plague to a captured Vrykul, and he turns into a goo. Mr. Westgard is not pleased and a little intimidated by this, so I drive a griffin over to Horde Town and bomb it to bits. Terrorists win. And upon returning, he's pleased and gives me the next storyline completed. And as a reward, I get to go kill more Vrykul. Thanks, Mr. Westgard. I swoop in on the town of Scorn, slightly to the north. Up here, things are pretty quick and easy. I roll in, I kill a bunch of Vrykul, but this time I also cut up their bodies for some reason. Wow, that's really messed up. Yes, it is. I also light their buildings on fire and I kill their leader for another storyline completion. And it really just makes you wonder, are the Vrykul just defending their land from foreign invaders? Are we in the right by killing so many Vrykul who were probably peacefully existing before we showed up? Probably not, but whatever, moving on. Next, we get a taste of the Scourge in Gjallarbrunn. I fly up and kill some undead Vrykul, and I free some prisoners, and I discover some dastardly plans. I bring these plans back to Mr. Westgard, and he sends me back up there. This time, I head up to kill some Scourgy boys, and some of their big bad named NPCs as well, such as this dude and this lady. And to kill this Frostworm, who is just here to remind me that this model will never be available as a mount. But upon heading back home, I get another storyline knocked out. And that's it for a lot of the Alliance fighting Vrykul stuff. Let's backtrack a little bit. We throw our flying in reverse and head on down to this Walrus Man. Oh yeah, Your they're here too. Praise be. Welcome. He's freaking out because <gasps> there are undead Vrykul down south spooking him. I head down to investigate where I discover that some artifacts were stolen from them. I head back to Mr. Walrus and he says, 
No, Mr. Walrus is my father. Go talk to him. So I head down to Walrus Town and tell the big Walrus the news. He says, Oh yeah, those pirates right over there across the street probably did it. I head down to the pirates so I can cozy up with them for information. The first thing I do is cozy up with Please this Tarin. He wants me to collect some debt from various pirates for him, so he seems like he'd be someone that knows about artifacts. First, I head into this pirate tent and bonk this guy over the noggin to get his debt. Then I head inside to this building and I meet this creature. Bruh. 2008 unupdated model in my Dragonflight experience. Reported. She helps me get another pirate drunk so I can steal his debt off his limp, fleshy body. The last debt requires me to do one of my specialties, grave robbing. I complete that and turn in all of my debt to Mr. Tarin, who has no yes. info for me, but he does mark another storyline as completed. Very nice. So I wander around to some of the other pirates, and I do some chores for them to help cozy up for more info on that walrus booty. I collect some Elon for one of them. I use a frog to find a traitor for another, and I take out a crazy pirate in a cave. Doing all this nets me both the pirate storyline and the location of all of the walrus treasure. I head into a cave to grab this big gem. Then I go into this boat to find this staff. I end up on a ghost ship and help these skeletons to get a shield. Then I do the Howling Fjord thing and fly all the way across the zone for this breastplate. I head back you to Walrus Jr. and he has me put the attention. artifacts back. But when I do, I learn that the spirits are pissed. I race back to tell the big walrus that they are pissed. And he says, Oh my great walrus in the sky, this is not good, please help us. But unfortunately for him, I got the storyline completed, so he's left to fend for himself. I backtrack a little bit more to a camp of explorers. They want me to investigate some of the dark iron dwarf shenanigans on a nearby cliffside, but with my fleshy purple elf body, there's no way I'd sneak in. So I have to make a disguise. I grab his dwarf tools, then I grab some other doodads from a few towns to make a disguise, and bada bing, bada boom, I'm looking robot-y. I sneak into the dark iron dwarf camp and steal some information. Then I see a small presentation about how operations at Ulduar are going. I use my jump pack to fly back home in a hilariously broken animation, and upon getting the news, the dwarf wants me to let Mr. Westgard know what happened. So I do for the storyline completion. This takes us to the last three storylines to complete in the zone. I head up to this camp of hunters way in the north. I first help some dwarves investigate some more iron dwarves. I don't know what really happens here, but it's pretty short, so storyline completed. Then I help this nymph save her sisters, which has a really, really cool part of the quest where I have to use this quest item with a 15 second cooldown eight times. Excellent game design. But after killing a big frosty scenarius ripoff, I get that storyline completed, and only one remains. I head over to this quarry where there's a ton of quests, but I ignore all of them for one specific quest. This fellow Knife here? Ear asks me to run up a mountain and cleanse my soul, and once I do this, I turn into a wolf and proceed to help another wolf reclaim his Sigma male status. And bingo bango bongo, achievement for Howling Fjord completed. And now I'll just jump right into Borea and Tundra and discuss both at the end. Borea sits at only eight storylines, a much nicer number to see. And here we start at Valiant's Keep, but it is under attack by the Scourge. But don't worry, certified hero of Azeroth is on the job. They send me to the front lines to beat up some spider dudes and shoot a few sky spiders down as well. Then a well, healer asks me to grab some anti-poison from a ship's hold. I head down into the bottom of the ship, but what do I find? A big birthday cake. I didn't even know it was somebody's birthday today. How nice. I head up to the ship's captain to ask whose birthday it was. But I just get handed this orb, and I get told to use it on various people in the keep. And if they attack me when I use it, I just have to bonk them back. It's kind of a weird birthday party, but whatever. I guess that's how they do things in Northrend. Storyline completed. After that, I get sent over to the town of Farshire. Farshire is a small farming town right outside of the keep's walls. And they are being attacked as well, with farmers being forced to fight off the scourge. I help them clear out some ghouls and burn some infected grain, and I also head into this mine to find a dead body, but I drop the follow-up quest. Keep this action in mind for later. I finish off this story by ringing the town's bell, rallying the peasants, and basically leaving them all to die at the hands of the Scourge, because I gotta go do some cringe druid things. Yup, it's time for the PETA quests. These guys want me to help a lot of animals, and if I kill any animals and then walk into their camp, they attack me. So I start out by disarming some traps, I remove some ears from nesting wary boys, I recover some animal parts, and finally I knock out this big boss here for the PETA achievement and the storyline completion. 
And now it's time to go play with some dragons. The war against the blue dragonflight is raging hard now. You gotta remember, we're essentially in the past now, which means there is no hot Caligos. We are in the age of Dragon Mommy Alexstrasza versus Big Dumb Gross Maligos. It all starts out at the Amber Ledge. I help the Red Dragonflight and the Kirin Tor to capture a prisoner, and then I torture him to figure out where he hid an Archmage that they stole. We eventually get this info and we find that she's locked away. We go save her and then we are sent into this giant bowl to help the red dragons take their fight to the blues. And we are given a laundry list of tasks in this area. We have to kill a ton of blue dragons. We have to kill some of these tree dudes for their splinters. We have to crack some eggs. We have to kill some named NPCs. We have to grab some stuff off the ground. A lot of stuff going on here, but it all just leads up to me getting this strange item that lets me summon well Karistraza. She's a nice red dragon who wants to cause a little more mayhem for the blues. So we kill a few more blue dragons together. Then we kidnap and brutally murder Maligos' wife. Bruh. And that gives me pause. It's a little messed up, but whatever. I'm here for the bloodlust. But then Karistraza takes it a step further and basically flaunts the corpse and yells at Maligos that we killed her. And Maligos comes out pretty reasonably upset about this, but then he does something a little bit controversial. He swoops down and steals Karistraza to be his new consort after he killed his old one. But it is then stated that he's going to brainwash her into doing it. And then in the dungeon, the Nexus, she's the last boss and she has claw marks all over her back legs and she's screaming things like kill me and finish it. So yeah, that got kinda dark, Blizzard. But it's okay, I got my storyline progress, so I get to move on to the Murlocs. Oh no, the Murlocs. As soon as I start working on this area, I begin having flashbacks to the Wrath launch. This is the last area I was in that had other players before I broke ahead of the pack, and it was so crowded. These cages took me so long, so many empty cages, and the escort quest, I never did end up completing it. And this big lobster guy, he took so long to respawn, so many stolen tags. Okay, never mind. I down a fifth of druidic vodka and blackout, so I don't have to relive it. Storyline completed! We're in the home stretch now. Up next is another smear of walrus love, my favorite. And because they're great to me, it's very quick. I legit head over there and I kill 12 dudes. Then I find a totem. Then I kill the named dude. Then I fly south and kill one more dude. And that's it, storyline done, two more to go. I head up the shore a little bit more to find Thessarion. He's well a death knight locked in mortal combat with a lich. And he asks me to go find the lich's phylactery. I head into a pool of cold water and dig it out so he can kill the lich. Then he has me go into this fort of undead and kill a couple dozen. Then I kill a few named NPCs and finally we climb to the top of this giant necropolis where I get treated to some very, very long RP while I write this script. Once the RP finishes up, Thessarion is reunited with his wife or sister or something, I don't know. And that is where I realize I messed up a little bit. Remember earlier when I had the quest in the mind and then I dropped the follow up? Well, whoopsie, I needed that apparently. It leads me on a quest line to help the lady that we just saw with Thessarion, who is his sister, because she's trying to find him. It turns out he's been dead for years. Then she got some rumors that he somehow enlisted up here. So we go on a little backtracking to go grab some wine from underwater. Then we talk to the walrus again. Then we talk to these dudes next to Thessarion again. And finally walk back into the building where we were just at five seconds ago for the achievement. But how did these zones hold up? I'll start out by saying that I think the changes from complete X amount of quests to complete eight stories was a good one. I'll elaborate more on that when I finish up all of the questing achievements so I have a better picture of them all, but it certainly makes it way easier and more accessible to complete a lot of these achievements. As for these two zones specifically, the biggest thing is how uneven they are. For reference, Howling Fjord took me about three hours while Borean only took an hour and a half. Howling Fjord had 12 stories, some of which were tiny, insignificant little quest chains. Meanwhile, Borean Tundra had eight stories, but it skipped over a ton of potential stories. In conclusion, Borea Tundra is definitely a better example of feeling like I hit important story beats. Most of the stories had me lead to some kind of solid conclusion or another story. Howling Fjord felt a lot more forced. While the Vrykul quests were all related, a lot of the other stories felt very disconnected. I still had fun either way with this one, and I'm excited to see how the rest hold up. If you like this content, please fjord on that like button and tundra on that subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. And let me know in the comments how you feel about these zones. I love y'all, and I'll see you on the next Achievement Man.